Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And today we're going to discuss about the first function of the governance function, which is called as an organization context. Thanks for sharing an amazing response and comments on my previous video of NIST introduction, which which motivate me to make more videos on that. And this is the part of the series, and I'm sure this video will give a great insight about NIST CSF. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. So if you go by the NIST series, in the NIST series, we have a approx six functions the function number one is governance the function number two is identify the function number three is protect the function number four is detect function five is basically respond and function six is basically recover in this video we're going to discuss about the governance and they are one of the subcategory of a function which is basically called as a organization context okay so that is basically the first part we're going to discuss Mostly the company who adopt NIST CSF, they want to know how to start cybersecurity from the basics. So if you can see in this, the first part definitely without governance, you can't identify anything. Without identify, you can't protect anything. So this framework, the best thing about this framework is you can start from the basics. Even you have a very limited experience, you don't know how to start. Even follow the step-by-step -step process, you can able to implement the NIST framework in your organization. So let's move to the next part. Thank you. So first part is basically called as a govern. Governance is basically all about set of governance. If you're new to the topic of governance, so do check my first video of governance series, which give you the visibility about what is governance and how governance works in the organization. Those who have a high level, it is okay. If you're not, then I'll give you the high level visibility about the governance. Govern is just like a government. You know, if you want to run a country, if you want to run a family, you need a governance. Example, like in the, in the house, mom and dad basically set the rules set the policies so according to that kid will follow and drive their life uh, when you appoint ministers when you appoint the legislative people they basically create a law they create a policy so by which they can able to control the behaviors of the citizen same like in the company we create a policy we appoint people that shows the example of a good governance as i said we don't have a time in this video to discuss more in detail but my suggestion is that you can check my first video of the grc series which give you the high level visibility how the govern work as i said if you want to start cyber security or information security in the organization it is always start with the governance so according to nic csf governance is basically all about establish monitor the organization cyber security risk management strategy expectations and policies okay so that is a basically the function of governance see when you're talking about the governance under the governance we have some sub practices example like we have a first practice is called as an organization context the second is basically called as a building risk management strategy we also need to have a different strategy from a supply chain because we take a lot of services from the vendor so we need to make sure we able to manage the risk on that level we need to document the roles and responsibilities. We need to build the policy, process, and procedure. And the most important thing, we need a matrix to monitor all these sub practices. But in this video, we're going to discuss about only and only organization context. Okay. Thank you. See, organization context is a most important thing as a CISO, you should understand. Whenever you're implementing a cybersecurity in any organization or you're implementing information security in any organization, it is very important for you to understand the context of the organization, perspective of the organization. Let's take example, we have a healthcare, okay? So we have a healthcare. Just give me a second. So if you take an example of healthcare, So in the case of healthcare, okay, their basically requirement is to protect the patient's data. Okay, so that is basically the requirement. They, they, they have a perspective is to protect the patient data over the protection of intellectual property. 
if you work for the financial services for them they want to prioritize the protection of customer data over the protection of operational system and if you take an example of the government agencies they they want to prioritize the protection of their classified information over the protection of public facing system so every organization has their own context okay it's very important for us to understand their context so that you can have a better visibility okay because until unless we don't have a understanding of the organization context we cannot able to implement the cyber security now if you work for the e-commerce for them the priority is availability if you're working for the banking sector for them the priority is integrity and confidentiality so according to that we need to prioritize the solutions okay so when you're talking about the organization context here the organization context is divided into the four part okay whenever we join we need to first understand the mission of the organization mission is basically all about the fundamental purpose or the mandate of the organization why does they exist what is the core reason for being in the market okay so example like one of the company has a mission is they want a digital transformation they want to raise the banking services to all the houses so that is a mission mission is basically all about why we exist okay to achieve that mission we basically set the objectives objectives is basically all about very specific okay so very specific uh, you can say very measurables okay so that is something we have okay so that is another important thing we need to understand and along with that it, it is basically trying to aim to achieve the particular goal so okay this could be related to the growth it could be related to the market share it could be related to the innovations or other strategic goals then we need to have a very good meeting with the stakeholders stakeholders are basically called as the interested parties okay the individual or entity that have an interest in the organization this could include your shareholders include your employees customers suppliers even the community at the large and last is basically the activity even the primary task or action the organization undertake to achieve its mission and objective so when we talking about the organization context we talk about these four perspective okay it's very important for us to understand the mission okay now when we talking about organization context by establishing and communicating the priorities organization can basically ensure that you know all the member of the organization align and moving in the same direction as i said i work i join a ciso in the e-commerce for them the availability is the first priority okay so all my initiatives all my technology all my best practices it should be aligned with the availability because the business is depending upon availability okay so by setting the context we can able to bring everyone on the same page we can also make the informed decisions about whether to allocate resource okay so according to us load balancer is our pri primary priority automation is basically our primary priority okay clustering is basically our primary priority so that is how we basically prioritize and we also need to understand which assets system process are more critical to the organization's mission objective and which allow for more focus and effective risk management so that is why organization context is a very important thing okay so if if you take an example okay let let's take an example here okay so as i said uh, i join as a ciso and it is a e-commerce site let's take an example it is a e-commerce site on a hurry hurry we can understand this is basically the e-commerce site so understand i understood the vision okay based on a vision we basically have a mission okay vision is basically give to the customer based on that we have a mission based on a mission we basically create a strategy so that is basically a strategy based on a strategy we basically create a tactical plan and based on a tactical plan we basically create an operational plan so strategic plan is basically mean you know this is something created by the ceo okay the ceo of the company and then tactical is basically prepared by the cio and ciso so example ceo strategy is basically business transformation they want a digital services they want to convert the banking into digital services so that is basically the priority so based on that cio will create their strategy how to support that digital solutions like introducing cloud digital transformations and then we have a ciso they have their own information security strategy to support and secure the digital transformations and all that and then we have a operation team so here until unless we don't have a visibility here visibility here visibility here there is no point of working on the tactical and operational side that's why we said understand which assets systems processes are are more critical to the organizations their missions and objective and according to that you know you can able to prioritize you know all your strategies and everything okay that's why the organization context is the foundation 
now moving to the next part when when we're talking about the the requirement of the context and all that okay it's very important for us to understand the vision and mission as i said vision is what the company want to be in when it grow up and mission is what we are or why we are exist and then we will need to understand the business objective as a ceo when you join you need to understand the revenue and growth target my suggestion is that take the last 5 year 5 year uh, revenue growth and charts that's the most important thing understand their plans okay tomorrow they want to expand in different countries so definitely they want to go for cloud and all that so that is something there identify the list of product and services they want to launch how it basically related to their you know reputations and all that understand the kind of a organization structure they have centralized and decentralized do they have a ceo in all the location or do they have a one ceo do they have a c positions in all that all the countries or they basically operate everything from the one particular office along with that we also need to understand the department and interdependency like do we have a correlation like one department is depend upon other department and that visibility you will get when you pen down the business process and you will see how the one process relate to the other process let's take example we don't giving attention to it for us the primary objective is some seven processes which generating a revenue but without it that doesn't support that function so that is how interdependency is required then we are operating in a particular country we have a some legal regulatory requirement so we need to identify type of business and that business need to be comply with which regulation so if you go to us you are into health process you need to comply with hipaa if you into the financial process you need to comply with glba if you going public listing you need to comply with sox the best thing in europe is you need to be comply with one regulation which called gdpr so all these things you will get a visibility when you go for the organization context okay another important thing you need to understand the level of risk the organization willing to accept to pursue the mission and vision okay so that that capacity that understanding you will get when you basically speak to the business team and all that okay it is very important to understand their risk tolerance so if you work for the startup companies they have a high risk tolerance okay if you work for the uh, if you work for the established company they have a low risk tolerance because they know even their small action will impact the organization objective so it's very important for us to understand the risk appetite of an organizations and that visibility you will get from the business owner example one business owner saying they have a maximum availability of 99.9995% okay so that become a risk appetite it should not so one minute one <coughs> one minute of downtime is okay so for them appetite is one minute but if it go to two minute it's it's a loss so that is how from business owners you will get the risk appetite and all that i have i have created one dedicated video on how to build the risk management function in the organization so so when you building organization context these are the areas you need to have so that you know you have a better visibility okay now next thing is uh stakeholders so when we talking about the stakeholder we have a internal stakeholders and we have a external stakeholders internal stakeholder like we have a employees management board what is their expectation from cyber security then you have a customers like partners regulators okay so these are basically the external stakeholders so it's very important for us to understand that then we also need to understand the cultural aspects culture is very important team as i said na like company have a high risk tolerance or low risk tolerance is come from a culture how they basically perceive the risk how they perceive the security how they perceive the business so culture is a very important foundation example there is a one company uh <clears throat> the employees are super motivated they report incidents and all that. that that shows the good security culture but there is a company who doesn't report the security incidents because they have, they, they can see that their managers doesn't follow that so cultural is basically very important where you understand the values and belief attitude towards innovation changes you know employee awareness training so when you reviewing the organization context or when you building organization context these are the areas you need to check then you also need to see your technological landscape so what kind of a technology they have adopt you know what is the existing it infrastructure what is the need of the business what is the current it does it I, the, does my existing it meet the business requirement we do the gap assessment between that okay then we look for the adoption of a new technologies how 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 they are comfortable how they are ready to adopt the business technologies new technologies how they going to manage their legacy system so that's something they need to identify along with that they also need to look for the financial considerations in a budget they are allocating for information security do they have a separate budget dedicated budget for information security functions and in some time what happen as a ceo you need to do the business cost analysis cost benefit analysis just to check you know their compliance with the requirement and everything 
we also need to see what is happened in the past any incident happened in the past so according to that we can able to rectify what is the lesson le they have learned and what are the lesson they have not learned so you will going to apply some best practices to make sure the same incident should not happen again so these are the things which we need to understand from the context perspective or when you implementing the organization context these are the areas you need to consider so we have done with all the summary so let's understand from the nist perspective what is the necessary requirement to comply for having a organization context so first requirement they say organization mission is understood and inform cyber security risk management as i said we need to share the organization mission mission marketing service strategy to provide the base for identifying risk that may you know impact that mission then we also need to have a second requirement of nic say that you know internal external requirements stakeholders are determined and their needs and expectation regarding cyber security are understood so for that what we have to do is we need to schedule the meeting with the stakeholders understand the requirement understand the expectations in terms of performance risk expectation of officers directors advisors you know identify the relevant internal stakeholder i already discuss in the slide right understand the privacy expectation from the customer perspective understand the legal requirement from a regulatory perspective business expectation of a partnership compliance expectation of regulators ethics and all that <clears throat> then third legal regulatory requirement regarding security definitely we need to determine a process to track and manage a legal regulatory requirement we need to create some kind of framework by which we can able to track the multiple compliance and all that we need to determine the process to track and manage a contractual requirement for the cyber security management of suppliers customers and partner informations and we need to make sure all the strategy should be aligned with my legal and regulatory requirement so if you have this you can able to meet the third requirement of nist then critical objectives you need to establish the criteria for determining the criticality of capabilities and service view by the internal external stakeholders you need to determine the business impact assets and business operations which is vital to achieve the mission objectives and potential impact of the loss you also need to establish and communicate the resilience objective like recovery time objective you know for delivering critical capabilities and services that's something you need to identify and then finally we have our outcome capabilities okay outcome capabilities and services that the organization depend so here for that we need to understand the inventory of the business inventory of the application inventory of assets which supporting the mission and vision requirement and also identify document all the external dependencies that are potential point of failure for the organization critical capability services so these are basically the important parameters we have by which you can able to meet this nisc requirement so more of the story what documentation required is you need to know the mission and mission the type of industry you work so according to the, you have sow list of legal regulatory requirement and the process to track list of services and products you offer list of suppliers any certification requirements they have business requirement which is document sign off because that give you the better visibility how the document works inventory of the policies the list of policies the information security updated strategy organization reporting matrix you know as we need to comply with the legal regulatory do we have any Uh, legal officers and all the inventory of my internal external services and list of suppliers so these are the necessary documentation we require to meet the governance requirement of the nest of of the organization context so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find this video okay instead of just covering a high level i i try to explain each and every function in detail so by this way you get a visibility how to implement the governance organization context as a function and how to how to build the organization context in the company okay So if you new to the channel do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic so without wasting a time thank you so much good day bye